Hello and welcome to lesson number 7.4, where we will talk about spatial statistics. So if you want to share some insights in your data, you can either present the data in a raw format, say, well, this is Swellendam, these are the roads of Swellendam, and this is the height distribution of Swellendam, but you can also just talk about some key factors, some key values, like a mean value, a minimum, maximum value. So the user or the um, listener on the other side has a chance to consume the information you're trying to you're trying to communicate. So in this term, we might ask ourselves, okay, what is the height of Swellendam? So we have, of course, an SRTM data set. You can see it here from black to white. Black values correspond to very small numbers, or small, small values, whitish color. Um, represents some high values in the height information. So you can also play around a little bit with the color scheme, so you can enhance it, you can uh, stretch the histogram, so the translation from value to black slash white color um, is triggered here. But let's come back to the question, what is the height with the average height in Swellendam. We can simply make an assumption here and have a look. Oh, well, this is the edge of the data where we have a height value of zero. Click somewhere else so you get some information like 162, 180. So is the mean height in Swellendam now 180 meters above sea level or 160? So how can we approach this? First of all, let's have a look at the histogram of the Rastafel. Double click on this, select histogram. If you cannot see, see anything, you can um, recreate, re uh, recompute the histogram. And so what, what can we see? So there's a, a spike here. There are um, uh, roughly 6,000 pixels with a value of zero. And now we will use this um, magnifying glass to zoom in here a little bit. So we have a distribution like this. A lot of values are here in the range up to 300 meters above sea level. And then there's another, another peak over here. But still, we cannot really say what is the mean value, right? Let's go to the information tab. There are some values. Statistics mean says 324. Statistics maximum 1,548. Have you seen something? This one, have a different value, right? 1,691. So we are still a bit unsure what is the minimum maximum. Um, there's, of course, a tool for that. So I've already tried it here, statistics. There's this raster lay statistics. You can double click on it and say, well, I would like to compute the statistics for band number one run this open the results dialog to check it close this and the results viewer is this one here so click there and now we will get some information about the raster file which says okay the minimum value is zero which does not make so much sense because we're in swelling them and zero is somehow a missing number so What's the problem with missing numbers marked as zeros? If they are going into the analysis, we have a an effect on the mean value. And the mean value here is said to be 332 meters. The standard deviation is 292 meters, and the sum of squares is listed as a sin. So we have a minimum value of zero, a maximum value of 1,699. Not the 1,600 um, value you have seen here, 1,691. Once again, 99, 91. As said, sometimes you need to have some sort of stretch. So let's have a look on the symbology. And we will not use the minimum value of one, a uh, zero, because this is a missing value. We will use the minimum value of one. Click on apply and uh, we will clip this now we cannot see the zeros anymore 
which is good. And this makes it a little bit better to see. Sometimes if you're opening up a raster file and, and you just see gray colors or something like that, try to have a look on the visual, visible uh, values here. Sometimes uh, missing values are marked as minus 32,768, which is quite a, a low number. So it heavily affects of the uh, heavily affects the colorful imprint on your map canvas. So, but once again, coming back to the question, what is the mean height of Svelandam? Right, so we have the roads layers here. So let's find out how we can work it out with the roads layer. First of all, we can say, okay, we have a region. So let's create a region around Svelandam. Therefore, we will use the minimum bounding geometry function. Minimum bounding or minimum bounding geometry. We will work with the roads data. We don't need any fields. Geometry type, there are different ways of creating a minimum bounding geometry. You can work with a rectangle, you can work with a square, with an envelope or a minimum enclosing circle, but we will go with a convex hull here. Click on run. Now you can see that this is the convex hull of the, of the roads layer, and we will create some measurements points in there because we don't want to cut out this area from the main raster data set, but we will sample the SRTM. Sometimes height data can be, or the pixels or, or the amount of information in raster data can be just exhausting. So it's always a good thing to sample data. Therefore, we need to create first um, a random pattern set and the random points in extent. And we will use random points in layer bounds. So we will use bounding geometry and the number of points we will use will be 250. We don't care about the minimum distance. You can see the, uh, the marking here, these distances are in geographic, um, in geographic degrees. So we, if we would like to assign a minimum distance value here, we need to um, translate this information first, but we will not do this. And let's just simply run this. What we are seeing now is we have 215 points scattered around the terrain, and we will now sample the underlying raster values. So sample raster values. You can see it here in the raster analysis. And the raster to sample is the SRTM. We will say, well, this is the height value. I then say run. Close this again, and now we have the sampled points. I'll remove this um, random points here. Highlight them a little bit. And these are the sample points. Now, we, what we will do now is we will switch to another style due to the fact that we have now the height information. So we'll use the graduated style using the height information and we will use a color scheme which will be this broadly used well let's go with variators so classify and say okay now we have the high values with marked in yellow and the low values marked in purple. But once again, what is the mean height of these points? Therefore, we can use the show statistical summary information. Open this up. We'll just pull this over here and we will select the sample points layer and we will have a look on the height one value. Of course, the count is 250. So we will have a mean value of 147, a median of 129. So if the mean and the median are close to each other, that's always a good sign for the spatial distribution of it, uh, for statistical distribution of it. And we have a minimum value of 23 and a maximum value of 857. Now, as said, so we can also use a different approach on the mean height in, in Svelandum, which is obviously not correct, but we can try to. Okay, so what about calculating the centroid? 
Let's have a look here on the centroid. Well, we could create a centroid on the on the bounding geometry. Centroid is marked here. Let's highlight this a little bit and sample there as well. Or we can skip this uh, sampling and we will s simply say, okay, what is the height value there, right? And the height value here is 78. Now, what we will do now is we will calculate the centroid. This is now the centroid of the bounding geometry. So let's take a look on the centroids of the sample points layer. Therefore, we will use the mean coordinates function. And we will use the sample points. We will not use a unique field or a weight field. Just press and run, close this again. Let's have a look where this is residing here. Let's go with the greenish color. This is somewhere different. So we have here a little bit of an offset between those two uh, values. So once again, we can have a look at the height information there, which is 91. And here it is 78. So quite a difference. I was just trying to show you how to sample data, how to calculate statistics for them, and what values are of importance and how to deal with the histogram of a raster, raster file. Please make always sure that you are really aware on about the question, what data am I using? As seen here from that SRTM file, the zero values on the edges of that SRTM file were, of course, used to create the um, statistics. So if we do raster statistics, let's go with statistics. There's unfortunately no way of excluding a number, right? That's quite um, a problem here. In this case so always make sure that you are aware of which what data you're using and how to sample data correctly random points are always a good way of dealing with uncertainty but also decreasing the amount of data you are looking at right and um, the random pattern fill always also works for you because there is um, not such a bias if you are using like like your own set of points where you just simply create a point feature layer with points of your choice. The random selector really randomizes this for you. In the next lesson for 7.4, which will be another part, we will deal with how to create a new data set, a new raster file from these um, point measurements. Stick with me and see you. Bye.